Hey, beautiful people. Today we are taking a look at a block of styrofoam. But since the Doku 2 is wedged in, might as well give it a look. It comes with a handy banana flavored driver disc. Yep. That's homebrew. Welcome to Linux, where we toss these in the wheelie bin. Ah, the trusty instruction pamphlet. What secrets do you keep? Supported sampling rates 44 to 192 and 16 and 32 bits. And it works with Linux, if you have a kernel that supports USB 2. It also works with Android 5.0, but who hates themselves enough to attempt that? Not me! In the box, we have a USB 2 cable that's slightly thicker than a bowl of oatmeal. Oh, looks! Micro USB, everyone's favorite bendy breaky connector. Moving on. This is surprisingly made of metal. Not much to it. Doak Audio U2 on the front. Evil little USB micro connector on the back. On the business end, we have optical and coaxial outputs. Hmm. Audio.com, CE, don't eat wheelie bins, and UL. Now comes the fun part. We get to feel the Doke U2 from the inside. Pop that off. It's reasonably thick. And that's about what I expected. Ooh, I don't like that. The backplate and USB connector, the only thing holding the board down. Let's get the front off. Now with any luck, this should slide right out. Nice case. Um, should be a decent heat sink. What do we have? Ah oh, yes, the Zemos. Most likely something from the X-Core line. Outside of that, a gang of surface mount resistors and caps, along with a chunky 220 down in the corner. On the front, we have optical spitif and the coax. Let's inspect the soldering job. You know what? I've seen worse. I've done worse. The back of the board is masked off and relatively clean, minus what appears to be, yeah, a small bodge job down in the corner. Well, let's get one last beauty shot. Smile for the camera. Installing the Duke should be as simple as plugging something in the USB hole and feeding it a spit of noodle. Right away, I can tell you the micro USB connection should be recessed just a little bit more. But we can see the lead for optical output has sprung to life. You have two options for spit of coaxial and optical. For coax, you can use most any RCA cable, but there are several places online. That will sell you a digital version of the same RCA cable for a small premium. For this test, we're going to be using an Amazon Basics optical toss link that will plug in as so. And look on the business end. Yes, we have lasers. Not really, but still. Pew, pew, pew. Let's take a look. This is out of the box on Linux, Debian 10. Let's head down to Hi-Fi DSD, which we have Hi-Fi DSD and DSD1. That's it. I mean, I really don't know what I was expecting, but maybe, just maybe, Pulse Audio has a bit more information and digital output, spit of. Hey, didn't expect. That, we have DTS, AC3, and AC, hmm. 
wonder if this thing will do 5.1 then. Yeah, it, well, it says it will. That's all I'll say. I don't have 5.1 to test. So we'll stick with the um, stereo pair toss link out. Moving on to Jack, just out of curiosity. It shows up as the DSD zero. Let's be easy on it. Let's just do bog standard. You should be able to do 48K, 256 on your buffer, period of two. Standard settings, I'm not, this is basically just default. And no problems there. DSP load, 4%, 5.3 millisecond block latency. But if we open up KTM, we can see that it has connected to the Pulse Audio Jack module. I don't know why you would do that in this particular instance, but hey, it's a thing it can do. That was easy mode. So... Let's find out if it can do what it said on the tin, which is going to be 192. Ah, well, it does. 10% DSP load, 1.3 millisecond block latency, and yeah, it connect. It connect good. Now you can ignore those 2x runs. That's going to happen with a Pulse Audio module jack, but all right. Good on you, little guy. Now, I'm going to be recording with my Motu Traveler, so I'll need to set the clock source to Toslink and optical in Toslink. Easy enough to do. You'll probably plug this into a soundbar or receiver, and you'll get your spit of audio. For this first epic dark battle of history, we will be putting the Duke U2 up against a DigiDesign inbox mini. I get that this is like comparing apples and wrenches, but they're both around $50 US. And for my use case, the Duke U2 needs to sound at least as good as a USB 1 DAC from 2007. For the test, we're going analog out on the inbox and optical on the Duke. Pretty good.
First, apologies for the beep boop music. I needed something I had the rights to, and, um, oh, hi, drunken, psychotic YouTube copyright bot that seems to thank our credits for the Wednesday show is, uh, Stranger Things. How you doing? Second, I'm curious if anyone at home could tell the difference between the Inbox 2 Mini and the Doke U2 after U2 got done chewing on it. Thirdly, the Doke U2, it has not one, but two. 2.5? 2.5, can you do that? Fatal, fatal, fatal flaws. The first one being this USB micro connector, man. It hangs out the back. I mean, it's just daring you to snap it off. The second, there's nothing holding the board in place other than the front and back panels. You can easily move the board around with just like the slightest amount of erotic wiggling. <laughs> I would expect such nonsense. I would from, let's say this was 20 bucks. Yeah, but it wasn't. This critter was as little as makes no difference, $50. That's unacceptable. And fourthly, nine times out of 13, this is the big one. This little critter refuses to power on. Here's a picture of it plugged into one of the ports our thread ripper system. Notice the lack of red LED goodness coming out of the toss link shield. It is what it initializes. There's no rhyme or reason. It's pure RNG. Sometimes it'll come on. Sometimes it won't. Sometimes it'll come on if you plug it into another system. Sometimes it won't. There's nothing you can do. It is pure RNG goodness. Now, personally, I don't have time to plug and pray. And I doubt you do either, man. I doubt you do either, but I did. Just out of curiosity, I emailed Doke US, um, their eBay store, where I bought it from, asking, hey man, is this a known issue? And maybe there's some type of workaround. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. It clearly says, hey, I work with Linux and, you know, it's compliant. Plug it in. It should work. They eventually replied it maybe four days later, with, um, I'm not paraphrasing. Want refund, comma, or replacement? Yeah. Well, fast forward a week, and here I am. Bam. Maybe I should do it, like, bam, double complete doke. Ooh, two, man. Um, the replacement unit, they said. Which they did. Well... Well, it wasn't screwed together properly. The back was genuinely loose enough to make a rattling sound when I shook it. And it's like, fine, you know what? I'll just live with this because I just wanted to see if this one legitimately worked. So I went to plug a toss link cable into it and the back was so loose. When I plugged the toss link cable in, the board recessed into the case where I couldn't make a connection. I mean, okay. <laughs> You know what? I was able to pull the screws out of the back and um, get them back in correctly, but that's not something I would expect to have to do, especially because these are Torx bits and um, you might not have that laying around the house. You know, and you're not going to be able to get that out with a small screwdriver. So, yeah, I, I really don't know what to say to that because you you know, Duke. Duke Audio or Doke Audio, you know, for a company that claims to be devoted, and it's going directly off their website, devoted to researching and development of hi-fi products, they don't seem to be terribly bothered with whether or not they actually work. Lacking in the QA department. Absolutely. However, if you want to play the home game, there will be links in the description to the eBay store for the Doke Q2. Add one on Amazon. If you're brave, head to the video description and um, take a look there. But you'll also run along, or across I should say, a link to our Patreon because bam, check out that smooth segue. Yeah! I need to thank all the beautiful party people who make everything we do possible. Big extra thanks to Carl, Mike, Basil, Arthurin, Linux Nuru, and Aldius. They're back there on our fine upstanding cannibal wall where they belong. 
so they can be forever reminded of their fiscal irresponsibility for picking up things in the studio from our Amazon wish zone. I think that's going to do it, though. Because like you, I'm not a fan of buying something that just doesn't know how to Linux. And I, I'm doing what I can to try to answer some of those questions. And more importantly, more hopefully, save you a few bucks in the process. But that's going to do it. So as always, get out there and make something awesome.